This is a Google Mesh uh, wireless router, and and I have four of them uh, all over my house. I have three different floors in my home, and this mesh network basically acts as one access point. Most of the time, you have a one router with one name, and you connect to that router, and the, and the further you get away from that router, the less effective the Wi-Fi signal is. So this mesh network counteracts that. So I can now place these all over the house one access point and it doesn't really matter where I'm at because I'm probably closest to one of these four routers. So I've had these routers for around seven years now and seven years ago, Wi-Fi 5 was the latest and greatest in technology. That was seven years ago. Back then I maybe had six, maybe six or seven things connected at any one given time. Maybe a, a TV and my phone, maybe my kids were playing Xbox and maybe another kid was watching TV. So six was about as maximum as I got and that worked fine. But as the internet of things happen, right? There's more and more devices connected to the internet. Every single light I have is connected to the internet. My washer and dryer, every TV, every overhead light, every outside light. Now I have 60 different devices connected to the internet. And again, all going through that mesh network, that Google mesh network that I talked about earlier. Seven years ago, when I first installed this system, we weren't even doing video calls. Zoom wasn't even a thing seven years ago. I mean, it was, but I wasn't using it. I was using Teams, but rarely did we ever have a lot of video calls. We were mainly audio calls. I think the biggest thing I pushed was maybe 4K, but things have changed. It's seven years later and now, now, every single TV is running 4K. I do Zoom calls all day long. I have a kid on the Xbox. My wife is watching TV. I have seven other TVs in the bar alone connected to the internet. So now I've gone from six devices connected to 60 devices connected. But sometimes my network starts getting jittery. And I know it's not my network because I'm actually running a gig down and 100 up as my internet ISP provides. That should be plenty of power for a Zoom call and Netflix and Xbox running at any given time. But I think what's happening is it's getting congestion, meaning there's too many devices on the channel, on the mesh network, and it can't handle all those devices. So I've decided to take the plunge into upgrading my internal network at my home. Nowadays, the latest and greatest is Wi-Fi 7. That's the cutting edge that you can buy. They have home riders that are Wi-Fi 7. They have mesh networks that are Wi-Fi 7. I was kind of excited to see what it can do. And then I went and looked at the price of Wi-Fi 7. And immediately <laughs> I said, uh, that's probably not going to happen. So I started researching other things that are available. Of course, I said this is Wi-Fi 5, so there's Wi-Fi 6 in between. And the more I looked at it, the more I realized that Wi-Fi 6 is probably where I needed to go. And so much so that then I saw Wi-Fi 6E and I thought, maybe this is where we need to go. What I did was I priced out a bunch of Wi-Fi 6 routers and I picked one. I picked a, a Wi-Fi 6E router that I'm going to install today. So before we launch into Wi-Fi 6E, I wanted to show you a quick test of my internet speed. It was at 5 a.m. this morning and I, I did have a bunch of devices connected, but nothing was really pushing the internet because it was just me online. Everyone else was asleep. There was no TVs on. Nothing was really happening. So here's my speed. So as you can see, I got 207 down and 40 up. Now, if you've ever run speed tests, you know that you can run this 10 times and you're going to get 10 different answers. And this was on an iPhone 13. So I'm really curious to see if there's any improvement when I go to Wi-Fi 6E. I'm going to do three different tests. One on my iPhone 13. Two, I'm going to do one on the MacBook M2. And three, I'm going to do one on a Windows 11 Nook device. And then see if there's any improvement when I go to Wi-Fi 6E. Now, for those of you that aren't network nerds, you have to match up the device with the Wi-Fi you're going with. So Wi-Fi 5 is pretty common. Common, everything connected to it probably can use Wi-Fi 5. Wi-Fi 6 is obviously a step above Wi-Fi 5, but not every device can connect using Wi-Fi 6. So you're going to have to pay attention to what devices you're connected to. Wi-Fi 7 is even better, but not everything can connect to Wi-Fi 7. So it doesn't really do a lot of good to go to Wi-Fi 7 if you don't have any devices that are capable of Wi-Fi 7. For example, this MacBook 2 can only go to Wi-Fi 6. So even if I upgraded to Wi-Fi 7, I wouldn't notice the difference probably with this MacBook 2. Same with my Mac Mini, same with my Nook. In fact, my Nook only goes to Wi-Fi 5. So I'm not expecting to see a big difference there. So let's look at the new 6E router and see the difference. So here's what I picked up. This is the new TP-Link AXE 5400. And the reason I chose this was two reasons. One, it got fantastic reviews on Amazon. There was nothing bad to say about it. And I love reading Amazon reviews. Two, it was $170. In comparison, I looked at some Wi-Fi 7 routers and they were like $800. So it was a pretty easy choice for me. So here's the beast out of the box. 
Wow, it looks, looks kind of like a stealth fighter crossed with a drone. It looks very impressive. So uh, I can't wait to get this installed and just run some quick tests. And, and the plan is this, I'm gonna keep my mesh network that I have with the Google Mesh all over the house, but I'm gonna put all of the routers that I have downstairs, I'm gonna put them all on the first two floors. So there's gonna be four routers on the first two floors. In the basement where I do most of my work, I'm gonna use that new Wi-Fi 6E router and then connect every single TV downstairs I think there's six of them uh, and connect them all three of my computers all to that one network. And another reason I wanted to upgrade is because I do a ton of YouTube videos and LinkedIn videos and they're gigs large. So in order to move those to OneDrive or Google Drive and, and upload those to YouTube, I really need a faster network because it's painfully slow right now. And just for fun, let's do a corresponding test on my MacBook M2 and see what it compares to the iPhone 13. So test number one was basically about 30 up and then 21.8 down. Let's just do one more because that's way slower than the iPhone was. Test number two, 56.7 and 21.6. Uh, those are still way slower than my iPhone 13. And again, every time you run this test, it's gonna be different variables. But just to reiterate, I have a gig coming down to my network. So theoretically, if I plug the Cat5 or Cat6 cable directly into my network, I should be able to get closer to a thousand. And I could test that because I could test right from the Google Mesh that is plugged directly into the router coming out of the house. And I'm getting 861 was the last test. Well, so way closer to a gig, the closer I get. So just for fun, let's do the Windows 11 machine. That's that small nook that I have. And that's using Wi-Fi 5 as well. So here's Windows 11 machine running uh, Wi-Fi 5. Let's see if it's any faster using the same website. So we're running 22.3 down and 42.4 up. So again, vastly different numbers from three different devices. By the way, they're all in the same distance from the router. So again, a far cry from the gig down that I'm getting to the house and the 100 up. So let's go put the new Wi-Fi 6E in and see if there's any difference. Installed the router, uh, it's all set up with upgraded firmware and we're ready to test. We have the Tattooed Nerd 2.4 and 5 network as well as the Tattooed 6 network. So I'm hoping for big things here. All right, so let's look at some of the results of some of the tests I just ran uh, on the iPhone. You can remember, well, you don't have to remember, I'm gonna put it on the screen. Uh, the first test we ran was 2.07 this morning. It looks like 6.19 uh, uh, a.m. with nothing running. Now, once I've installed the new router, so we're running Wi-Fi 5 on this iPhone. I could even see, honestly, the Wi-Fi 6 uh, network. So this is connected to Tattoo Nerd Wi-Fi 5. 557, 562, the slowest was 449 and 603. That is three times the difference uh, from installing a new router. So that's a marked improvement and I'm happy with that. The upload time seems to be the same regardless, but I'm happy with the results so far. So let's go on to the MacBook 2 and the Windows 11 machines. Let's go to the MacBook M2, which is technically capable of doing six, uh, Wi-Fi six. So let's just test it first with Wi-Fi five. Let me get to the screen here. And let's connect to the five network. The Tattoo Nerd five network is right here. We're connected. And let's just, uh, let's run a test. Do you remember the speed from the Google Mesh? I don't either. I'm going to put it on the screen. So <laughs> we'll all be on the same page when we start this test. All right, 315 and 20 up, um, still significantly faster than Google Mesh. Let's switch to uh, Wi-Fi 6 and see if we get even better results. I'm hoping for big things. All right, let's switch to Wi-Fi 6. All right, we're connected, finding the optimal server. All right, let's go. Well, that's super disappointing. <laughs> 124 down, 13 up. That is less than half of what of what uh, Wi-Fi 5 was. Uh, let's try it again and hope for better results. Uh, that's not any better. <laughs> 127 and, and basically 13. So as you can see, Wi-Fi 6 for me is not nearly as fast as Wi-Fi 5. Um, I'm not sure what to make of that. <laughs>
Okay, and lastly, here is my Nook, my Windows 11 device. You can see down here, it is connected to Tattoo Nerd uh, 5. I can't even see Tattoo Nerd 6. Obviously, the hardware can't connect to uh, to Wi-Fi 6. So, so we're going to test Tattoo Nerd 5 with the same parameters by going to the speed test webpage and hitting go. It's that complicated. So we ended up 147 down and almost 46 up. I think that's actually the best uptime of all three of the different devices we've tested so far. Okay, public service announcement break in. After I did all the tests and did the video, I spent the afternoon kind of racking my brain on why Wi-Fi 6 on my MacBook M2 was slower than uh, 5G or 2.4G on all the tests. It was the slowest machine I had, and I was trying to figure out why, and then it came to me. I have another MacBook M2 that I can test with, and I wondered if that would make a difference. So I went and got my wife's MacBook M2, and full disclosure, all the tests that I was doing was on my Zoom laptop, my corporate M2 that I that I used to all do all my Zoom meetings, right? And that's theoretically where all my problems were because I would be in Zoom meetings and I would see drop connections, I would see slow internet, and that's what led me down this path. Let's just test with another M2 on Wi-Fi 6 and see if I get the same results and I didn't. So 802 down and 45.4 up. These are the fastest times of any of the machines I have. And here's my theory. This MacBook 2 is literally clean. There's literally no bloat on it at all. It is a clean install of the Mac uh, OS. The only thing I've actually installed is probably uh, Office 365. The rest of it, my wife uses for paying bills, cruising the internet, and, and checking email. Nothing else is on it. No security, nothing. And the test that I was doing was using the Zoom IT laptop, the MacBook 2. But there is a ton of security implications on that thing. There is Global Protect with uh, VPN, with Force VPN, by the way. There's CrowdStrike. There's Vault. There's IntelliHub. There's a ton of probably security policies on this machine. And I think that's causing all the problems on Wi-Fi 6. A clean install worked fantastic, worked as expected. This corporate laptop, not nearly as fast as a clean install. So that's my theory. All the security bloat on this IT laptop is causing a problem. Can I prove it with data? I mean, I just did kind of because at 802 down, a clean MacBook M2 on Wi-Fi 6 is blazing fast. That's exactly what I was expecting this corporate laptop to do. And it's not even close. Now, do I blame the IT department at Zoom for this? No, I mean, it's a slippery slope, right? There's a zero or a one. Usability and productivity versus security. I understand you probably need to lean towards security, but think of all the productivity that I'm losing by using this corporate laptop to upload videos and download videos and have Zoom calls. It's causing problems. I don't know how to fix it. I'll take that up with, with Zoom IT. And thankfully, I think I found the cause. It's literally just the security policies and the cure is Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 works as expected. I'm now super happy with the results. And by the way, next month I get five gig down and five gig up. I can't wait to redo those tests then. Okay. Back to regularly scheduled programming. So uh, with these very scientific facts and, and tests, you can clearly see that Wi-Fi 5 on my MacBook 2 and on my iPhone 13 was drastically faster than mesh. My iPhone 13 can't connect to Wi-Fi 6. Uh, my MacBook can, which was significantly slower than Wi-Fi 5. That is shocking, and uh, I'm not sure uh, why. <laughs> and just so you know, I did the default configuration on this router. I literally just plugged it in, renamed uh, the Wi-Fi 5 network, and renamed the Wi-Fi 6 network. I did update the firmware on it, so that's the only thing I've done. I don't know if there's any customizable configurations or advanced settings that I can do to improve it, but this is just out of the box. Wi-Fi 5 wins, beats Wi-Fi 6. Probably shouldn't happen, but it is happening on this MacBook 2. And the iPhone 13 was drastically different and way better than even the MacBook 2, which again, surprising. I don't have any device that can connect to Wi-Fi 6E, nor do I have any device that can connect to Wi-Fi 7. So I have no way of testing to see if there's faster. I'm sure there's probably something I need to change or do to make Wi-Fi 6 better on the MacBook 2. I don't know what that is, so maybe you can leave some comments below of, of how I can configure that better.
So I think it was worth 170 bucks to upgrade the router. Again, I'm not sure why, <laughs> why Wi-Fi 6 is not faster. I'll investigate that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video a little bit and learned something from it. If you like this video, please follow me on LinkedIn or subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the meantime, I'm Patrick Kelly, the Tattooed Nerd.